Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, all three capacitors have an initial charge, 40, 100, and 60 microcoulombs. They're all the same size, two microfarad capacitors, and we're connecting them in series. Notice that the positive end of one is connected to the negative end of the other, and we're consistent throughout the circuit. So now what we're trying to do is find the final charge on each of the three capacitors, C1, C2, and C3. How do we do that? Well, let's see. If they're connected in series, that means I can go around the entire circuit, add up all the voltages, and those voltages should add up to zero. So what I can do is I can say that from negative to positive, V1 plus negative to positive, V2 plus negative to positive, V3, that must all add up to zero as I go all the way around the circuit. Now this is interesting. All three voltages appear to be positive here, but how can they add up to zero? Well, that means that at least one of them should be negative, or maybe two of them should be negative. They can't all three be negative because then again, they can't add up to zero. So the charges are going to be moved around in such a way that at least one of those three capacitors will have the charges reversed when it's all said and done, when the three capacitors, the circuit reaches its final steady state situation. So next we're going to go over here, realize that the definition of capacitance charge divided by voltage, therefore voltage is charge divided by capacitance, which means that V1 can be written as Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2 plus Q3 over C3, and that adds up to zero, remembering that the small Q1, Q2, and Q3 are the final or steady state charges on each of the three capacitors. Now, what do we think is going to happen? We expect that some of the charge from C2 will probably go to C3, like this, and negate like one of these, which would negate one of those, which makes this one go around here, and maybe negate one of those, this will become zero, and the negative will go to this direction and then negate the positive charge on that side. What that seems to indicate is that however much charge is gained by this capacitor, that's the amount of charge lost by this capacitor. And however much charge is lost by this capacitor is the same as the amount that's lost by this capacitor. So basically, actually, this one is not gaining charge, this one is losing charge because this positive will negate this and this negative will negate that. So all three capacitors are changing charge at the same rate because they're all connected in series, which means that the final charge, Q1, is going to be equal to the initial charge, Q1, plus the change in the charge, delta Q. And Q2 is going to be equal to the initial charge, large Q2, plus the change in Q, and Q3 is going to be equal to the initial charge, Q, big Q3, plus the change in the charge, delta Q. All three capacitors are going to change in the same way. If this positive charge goes over here, this, the charge on this one diminishes, becomes smaller, and the charge on this capacitor will become smaller, and at the same time, the amount of charge on this capacitor will become smaller. So they will all change in the same way. All we need to do now is find out what delta Q is equal to. So what I can do is I can replace Q2 and Q3 and Q1 by what those are equal to, eliminating Q1, Q2, and Q3, and have an equation with delta Q only. Let's try that. So Q1 is going to be equal to, small Q1 is going to be large Q1 plus delta Q, oop, delta small Q, divided by C1 plus big Q2 plus delta Q over C2 plus Q3 plus delta small Q divided by C3. And that must all equal to zero. Now also realize, since the size of the capacitor are the same, I can simply get rid of the denominators, right? Since C1 equals C2 equals C3, this then simplifies to Q1 plus delta Q plus Q2 plus delta Q plus Q3 plus delta Q that equals zero. Then I come up here, 
I can move all the delta q's to one side and leave all the q's on this side. So I can have q1 plus q2 plus q3, the initial charge on all three capacitors, must equal negative 3 delta q on the other side, which means that delta q is simply equal to the total charge I started with, q1 plus q2 plus q3, all divided by a negative 3. So it looks like delta q is a negative quantity. Plug in what these are equal to, that would be 40 plus 100 plus 60, and divide by 3, which is 200 divided by 3, Oop, that's negative 3, so delta Q is equal to 200 divided by negative 3, which would be a negative 66.67 microcoulombs. All right, now I'm ready to find the final charge on each. Q1 is going to be equal to the initial charge, 40 microcoulombs, minus the delta Q, which is 66.67 microcoulombs, Oh, it's plus delta Q, but the delta Q is negative. Wow, there for a moment there, I wasn't sure I got the signs correct, but I do. So this is equal to Q1, a minus 26.67 microcoulombs. Q2 is equal to 100 microcoulombs minus 66.67 microcoulombs, which means Q2 is equal to 33.33 microcoulombs. And finally, Q3 is equal to the initial Q3, which is 60 microcoulombs minus 66.67 microcoulombs, which means that Q3 is equal to a minus 6.67 microcoulombs. In the end, what we have is this, that C1 will end up with a minus 26.67 microcoulombs, which means that the charge will have reversed. C2 will have a positive 33.33 microcoulombs, so the charge will remain in this position. And finally, Q3 will have a minus 6.67 microcoulombs, and that will allow our voltage is to add up to zero. So we add this, because remember that voltage is Q divided by C, and Cs are all the same for each one of them. So proportionally, when we add these together, we should get zero, and you can see that will be the case when we add the charges. So it looks like we did get the right result, and those are the final charges on the three capacitors in this particular case.